that position that Asa is in, in the bar as a program coordinator, I can hear that here you're calling it spiritual officer. I worked in that position for a year, and the following year I, I served as a deputy president of the SCF. Then the following year I was then deployed to serve in the SRC. And in that year we had the best, best SRC of the year, or of the century, because that SRC never had issues of corruption. And I know sometimes as children of God we say, no, but uh, politics are for politicians. But we went in, we took over, and we showed everyone that was in that campus that children of God, when they are in leadership, then things are about to go well. Amen. I'm challenging you to say there is a place where you should tap in order to transform what is happening around you. We open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I know someone already is worried, why isn't he going to Isaiah 62? We'll touch on that. Hallelujah. The book of Hebrews chapter 11. Then we read verse 23. And it reads as follows. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Father, it is your way, it is not mine. If it was mine, I would be worried, because sometimes I make promises, but I do not keep them. But your promises, they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And we are confident that even in this day, you will to transform us, not change us. Because change can be changed, but transformation remains in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. I've got a topic today that says, make up your mind. Make up your mind. When we are afraid, the Bible says, by faith Moses' parents decided to hide Moses and go against the edict of the king just because they saw there's something special in him. And I realized that should the parents of Moses have chosen not to take care of that thing that they saw in Moses, then perhaps God would have struggled to find a Moses to take care of Israel. But they take a decision, and later on, that decision benefits Israel. But I like verse 24, because it says, By faith Moses, now you need to understand that the things of faith, they cannot be attached to our parents. My parents can be born again. My parents can take me to ch um, children's church or Sunday school. My parents can take me to baptism. My parents can take care of ensuring that I arrive at church. But the responsibility, it is still lies in me to decide that I will then take this stand and start to walk. Yes. The SCF leadership can encourage you to come here. The SCF leadership can encourage you to do the works of the Lord, but you need to take a stand and start to work for the Lord. Amen. But I want us to look at the life of Moses. Moses grows up and he starts to enjoy the life in the palace. Moses grows in an environment that says he will eat anything that he likes. He can drive any car that he likes. He can book any hotel that he likes. He can go to any university that he likes. This is one of the opportunities me and you did not have. But Moses, when he grows up, when he's matured, he makes up his mind. He says, I cannot enjoy the pleasures of sin. I cannot enjoy the temporary things. I cannot enjoy the garlics and onions of Egypt. Whilst my 
brothers and sisters are in another area suffering. I would rather quit this, make up my mind to join them and work and understanding that this will not be for a season, but it will be something that takes me to the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There are things in our lives that are not taking us to the glory of the Lord. And if we are going to build, if we are going to pass through, if we are going to build, Amen. we then need to be in a position where we are separated and set apart. Because when you build, you are careful of what you are building upon. When, 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 when the, the, those who are in construction, they start to build, they do not just arrive in an environment and start building. They assess the environment. They assess the soil. They survey the area. They survey the slope of the area and they say, this is a good soil or it is not. And if it is a good soil, they start digging and build the foundation. But be careful, if it is not a good soil, they excavate. To excavate is to mean they take out every soil that they found there and they throw it away. And they come with the new soil that is needed for that place and they go, they start to stamp that soil in order for them to have the soil they are looking for. Yeah. And if God is going to use me, if God is going to use you, then there are things that must be excavated out of us. Yeah. 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 And when those things are excavated, then we will then find the word of God, which will be the new soil we built upon. <laughs> for any project that God has, he identifies a man to do the work. But if you're going to be sitting there and being found in wrong things and expect God to come and use you, then you're in the wrong place. Then you need to make up your mind that there are certain things I cannot do anymore in order for God to use me to build. The children of Israel are on a journey to Canaan. They arrive in other areas where the soil was good, the fruit was good, the food was good. And this is called the Mount Sinai. When they are at Sinai, they relax, they enjoy the environment. And my Bible says that God arrives at them. He says, you need to pass through because this is not your destination. You need to pass through. You need to bear in mind that we've got a destination where we are going. And that destination is not here. That destination is in heaven. And if we are going to arrive at that destination, when we are here, we should act as people who are in that destination. Yeah. I think I'm in a wrong place. Ah, uh, if my wife was here, she would hear me. You need to come to an understanding that you have not arrived. Amen. There are people when they are at campus, they start to think this is heaven. There is better heaven out there. Amen. And that heaven is not the workplace. That heaven is not business world. That heaven is heaven. Amen. We need to understand that we are passing. That we need to start to walk like people who are passing. Amen. Amen. You start to have your thing is saying we are passing through. When a woman is pregnant, she understands that this is just a temporary arrangement. Amen. And when you understand that this is a temporary arrangement, you start to enjoy that moment by understanding that I am passing. Amen. Pregnant women, they do not eat anything yeah. that comes their way. Amen. They wake up in the morning, they smell some food in the kitchen, and they start to have some morning sickness. They say, this thing that is smelling is not good for me. And they it can even throw up. Yeah. We need to come to a level where when we see sin, yeah. we feel like we can throw up. Amen. We need to come to a level where sin will be disgusting to us. Yeah. Because we are pregnant with yeah. heaven. Yeah. That when we see people walking around and hugging each other yeah. as if they are married, then we become disgusted. Yeah. I'm not here to excite you. I'm here.
to provoke things that God has installed in you. Amen. There are greater things that God has placed in you, but sometimes because the environment, it is saying you can walk around and date and join and drink and do all these things, then we find ourselves thinking it is a good environment. You have not arrived. Make up your mind. Amen. If we are going to build, we need people who know that we are going to sweat. I can read your letter email and it says pass through. Pass through the gate. Yeah. What gate is holding your life today? Jesus. The devil does not have power over your life. Amen. And he knows it. That is why when he puts a gate in front of you, he puts a gate that looks like it is of gold. Mm -hmm. And because you know gold comes from the Father, you start to think this one is from, it's from God. Mm -hmm. It's not every gold that comes from the Father. Mm -hmm. There's gold that comes from the devil. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you need to come to a level where you say to God, is this your gold? And if he says it is not, then you say, then release your fire. Yes. Because when the fire of God comes, yes. the book of Hebrews says it is but the consuming fire. Yes. Amen. When it comes, it consumes everything that is not of God. That will be left, it is of God. Amen. Therefore, if you find yourself fenced around and bottled by things, all you need to do as a child of God today, you need to call the fire of God Amen. and say you are the consuming fire. Amen. And when he comes as the consuming fire, he will come to consume everything that is in, yeah. around you. Yeah. What is around your life today? Are your friends helping you step by step to please the Father? And I know you love them so much. To a level that if I were to say to you, leave them today, you will not. <laughs> so I say to you, all you need to do in your secret place, say, Father, consume my life. Yeah. And when he consumes your life, that friendship that is not of God around you, that is not directing your steps That's to right. pleasing the Father, it will just die away. Yeah. When you call the fire of the Lord upon your life, even that thing that is giving you struggle, it will just be taken away. Yeah. The Bible in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. If we are going to prepare a way, then we need to come to a level where we understand that we cannot be found in the counsel or walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Because as we walk with them, it means they must lead us right. in that way. Then how do you lead them in the way of God if you are found in their presence? We need to come to a level where we are separated. We set ourselves apart from them. And when we do that, they will start to see the difference between them and us. They will start to have a clear distinction between them and us. And as soon as we separate ourselves, we do not wait, we start walking. Yeah. And when you do that, they will see there is a better way. Yeah. I'm in a wrong place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to come to that level where we understand that we need to make up our minds. When ladies wake up in the morning and they take a bath and they put on the makeup, they understand that the makeup, it will give them a different outlook. Okay. An outlook that is going to somehow tell the world that I am happy. An outlook that is going to tell the world that I am beautiful. An outlook that will tell the world some some they, they even buy different makeup that is more expensive. That says I am expensive. Of course. No. But um, when I say make up your mind, the word make up for me tonight or today 
it's not the makeup of that sex. Yes. Because that makeup hides the person that is originally created by God. I'm here to get you. And, and no offense to those who are making out. But the makeup, it hides for us the person that God has created. Amen. And when you start to work in that life mentality of that makeup, you might give us a wrong person. The world is not looking for a hypocrite who will be walking and singing hallelujah, but in the evening they are doing their things. Amen. It was just an example. You can continue with your makeup. Therefore, we, we need to come to a level where we give the world the reality of who God is. We need to walk in the principles of God. The Bible in the book of First Timothy chapter 5 verse, from verse 6, it says put to death everything that is earthly and that which is not of God. The sexual immorality, the idolatry, the adultery, the anger, the envy, the jealousy, the list continues. We need to come to that level where we get rid of these things from our lives. Immediately when we do that, we will be making up our mind to follow but Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. There is no other way except Jesus Christ. Yeah. Then if we are going to make a way for this world, it must be a way but to Jesus. Therefore, if we are going to present Jesus to them, we need to walk representing that same bread. Amen. I've never seen a marketing person, if we've got marketing students in here, I've never seen a marketing person who works at MTN and they're walking around Vodacom. talking about Vodacom. <laughs> <laughs> or they walk around wearing t-shirts of Vodacom. Mm -hmm. Or they've got some Vodacom stickers on their cars. They cannot do that. Yeah. When they are working at MTN, they are wearing MTN. They are on MTN. Their squeeze bottles are MTN. Everything they've got is MTN. I'm saying arise today, child of God. Stop carrying wrong bread on your shoulder. You are representing a bread, a bread of Jesus. And if you are representing that bread, you need to wear like you are working with Jesus. You need to walk like you are working with Jesus. You need to speak like you are working with Jesus. You need to pray like you are working with Jesus. You need to do things like you are with Jesus. Amen. There is no other way that we can make a way for them except when we are in Jesus. We need to make our minds. We cannot have both our feet in these areas. You cannot have one feet into alcohol and the other one in the face of God. I'm not here to excite you. You cannot be sleeping around and having one leg on the other hand. The Bible in the book of First Thessalonians, it says, it is the will of the Father that you be sanctified and set free Amen. or be away from sexual immorality. Yeah. You cannot be found sleeping on the other hand, around and on the other hand, saying, I am of Jesus. They do not mix. Amen. 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 I'm preparing you for the future. Mm. Out there it is tough. Yeah. In the workplace it's not easy. Amen. You go for an interview and they tell you it's fine, you can get the job. But come to my place tonight. When I was still in the SEO, I always blame these ministers and whenever I meet them I always tell them don't repeat that mistake. They would come to SEO and excite us with verses and go. They never told us the reality in the outside world. And I said, wherever I go, I will pass this message, especially if I was to meet young people in a campus. Yeah. Out there, it is not easy. Out there, they will say to you, in order for you to get this business deal, you need to go to so and so and so and so. Out there, they will tell you, in order for you to get this deal, you need to do these things. You need to give me some 50,000 rand. These bribes that you hear on the radios are a reality. That you come home 
home and someone gives you a bag of money, full of money, and they say, if you can give me that project, this is your money. But we need a generation. And I believe SEF so what you J campus, it is that generation Amen. that would say, even if I go to an interview, when I sit on that interview, I will present whatever that the Lord has imparted in me. And if you're gonna say I must sleep with you in order to get this job, I will say to you, thank you very much. With due respect, I don't want this job anymore. And you walk out as a child of God and you know that heaven is in joy. You know what's going, that heaven is not seated, it is standing and worshiping because of that decision you took. There is a song that we used to sing when we were growing up that says right in the corner where you are. Yeah. I would rather have a person who comes say they sit there, they do not raise up their hands and say hallelujah, but I know that in their corner, the decisions they make, they represent Christ. Yeah. I would rather have a someone who comes here and they say, I do not want to join your worship team, but at their secret place, that is where they'll take a decision that you are holy. Yeah. I would rather have someone who cannot play that keyboard, but they will be in their secret place and say, I love the Lord. Yeah. And when they're faced with an opportunity to be found in sex, found in mix it, that is not glorifying the name of the Lord, or some Facebook talks that are not glorifying the name of the Lord, and they say, I will not do that. No. I am on Facebook, but all that I chat about, it is glorifying the name of the Lord. Well. Amen. How is your secret life? The Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 7, it says he shall reward those things that are done in secret, yeah. mm. but you reward them in public. Yeah. I'm reminded of a story in the book of Samuel. I think it's chapter 12, I want to look for it. The Bible says, no, it's chapter 16, I think. The Bible says, then Absalom took the concubines of his father, he pitched a tent on the roof. <laughs> And he slept with them one by one, whilst Israel was watching. And we think, why would he do such a thing? He was doing that because David was now rewarded for the things he did in the secret. Remember, a David that we are talking about is the one who killed Uriah's yeah. Bathsheba's wife. Again. Yes. And he slept with her, and the story is long. But he was repaying him in public the secret sin of sex that he did in private. Mm -hmm. Do not be misled. Okay, perhaps they will not sleep with your children on the roof of the, of the, of the tent or whatever. But these things, they have a way of catching up with our future. Today when I walk, and I'm not walking with pride, I'm saying these things to show you a point. Today when I see the success of God, I know it is not by my might, but it's because of the decisions I made as a young person in campus. Not to sleep around, not to do all these things. And today I see the Lord rewarding me in public. Amen. When I go into a business meeting, I know it is awarded because I am with the Lord and the Lord is rewarding the decision I made then when I had an opportunity to sleep around. If we are going to build, if we are going to make a way, there are certain things which are determining us that I will no longer do this. Amen. And play me some steps, please. If there if we are going to be an example, the last the last part of that verse in the book of Isaiah 62 verse 10. It says, so that the banner, let's read it. Pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations.